first off, if your 50-year-old husband comes in and says he wants to start a ska band, just take him to rehab, just right away. <laughs> just take him. If anyone wants to start a ska band today, fucking take them to rehab. Bad time. Guys, on podcast, so keep it alive. Please give it up for Mr. Greg Barron, everybody. Let him in. I love this show, and I love the idea that that you have an experience where you're like, "This is not happening, right?" Like, just this is fucked up. You know, we all have those stories. I mean, I have a I have a ton of them. One I'm not telling today. I saw the penis of the drummer from Metallica, like at a show, that's not happening, no. I mean, like you can't wrap your head or anything around it, it's huge. <laughs> but also sometimes you forget that you're the thing that's happening to somebody else. Like you're the fucking, oh my God, this is not happening. Like you're the event that somebody goes, fuck you. So I would like to tell you a story that has both of those elements uh, and it involves my sobriety, uh, which I have today. Uh, and I've had since 1996, except for the two times I got high. Which, so that, then it's not since 90, so I broke it. But that's because the, <laughs> that's not the rules. So you don't get to just leave uh, where you can, and I have. Um, but one time it was my decision, and then the other time it was also my decision. So the, the first story, <laughs> the first story is this one. So my wife and I, uh, we had a 19-year-old uh, a dog, okay? fucking 19 year old German Shepherd, that is fucking old. Like that is, that's done. Like that dog is fucking done. Like it literally just sat in the corner of a room. It was like a fucking pillow with bones in it and a head. It just sat there. Like the dog wanted to be done. Do you understand? Like it was just being kept alive on pills. That's it. We just gave it pills to fucking keep it alive. And you know, they're fucking, they don't, you know, they're not, well, they are dumb, but they're not that dumb. You know what I mean? Like the dog was just like, you could just tell, he was like, fuck dude, haven't we done this? Haven't I dogged this shit out of it? What the fuck do you want from me? Fuck, I got the ball. Remember that? I got it a bunch of times, as I recall. And I fucking shit on the carpet and ruined that whole fucking birthday party thing. And then I took a picture for your fucking Instagram. Please, what the fuck more do you want from me, right? But you don't kill it because it's a dog. So like, here, take these pills. We just gave it a lot of pills, right? So anyway, we had this dog and it was very old and, and it was being kept alive on pills. So, uh, uh, and I didn't know what the pill, I didn't pay any attention to what the pills were. I mean, it had, there was one, the, the dog had no moves left, right? Except for that, uh, except it would fart, right? It just, oh, you know what I mean? But their buttholes are all worked out, so it just, you don't even know it's happened. You know, their buttholes are all loose, so it's just, ooh, it just comes out. It's like a cloud, like, ooh, like it just, ooh, it's just a ghost fart, it's just a whistle. Like you don't know it's there until you know it's there and then you're fucking pissed. Cause dog farts are like, like you know how some smells make you go, Ugh! but dog farts make you piss. Like you're like, fuck, what the fuck is this? Jesus Christ, good God. The fuck's wrong with you? So anyway, uh, there was one Christmas. Uh, I love Christmas, I fucking love, I like Christmas so much I'm gonna make you fucking hate it. That's how much I like it. I'm that guy. I like it so much I ruin it for my whole family, which is fucked up because I have kids. Anyway, so I have that. <laughs> it's Christmas and uh, I'm overexcited about it and I'm also depressed uh, because I have depression and anxiety, which I'm not aware of. And also there was a sweater I wanted and I'm not fucking getting it. <laughs> like even when my wife said, you're not getting it. I'm like, like in a surprise way or I'm not fucking getting it. <laughs> not in a surprise way. And then she's like, it should be about the kids. Fuck you. I I dog-eared the catalog, and then she's like, I don't even know what a catalog is, because I live in the now. The point is, I was very upset, and it was Christmas Eve, and I was sort of, I was having a panic attack and feeling shitty, 
and not to get too dark, but I was feeling uh, suicidal. I was struggling with some mental health issues that I didn't know that I had, and anxiety. And, um, uh, and then all of a sudden, I remembered that one day, when my friend was in the house, he had walked past the dog pills, and he had noticed that one of the jars of pills was like, oh my, oh fuck, you have those. You know what I mean? He didn't say what they were, but he made a face that went, that's good. Like there's something in those pills that might be something a depressed person should take on Christmas Eve. So there were two jugs, of, they, you know, and the dog pills come in like little tiny jugs, like tankards, not the tall orange ones. So um, thanks for clearing that up, Greg. You're welcome. <laughs> I walked past the dog pills. I remember that one of them is potent apparently. I'm not sure which, because I also know the other one's for the butthole. So I don't want to take, I don't want to take the wrong one. My butthole's tight enough, you know what I mean? I don't need to fucking really, my sphincter's good enough. I don't need to really, you know what I mean? It's for a dog that has, anyway. So then there's a, there's a, there's a, there, on one of the jugs, there's the sleepy face guy. Do you know the sleepy face guy on the pills, right? He's like, he's got like a nose and then he's like, oh, he's so tired because he's taking these pills and he's not allowed to operate machinery. Do you know what I'm talking about? That guy. If that guy's on a jar of pills, fucking take if you want to party. But don't. I'm saying no to drugs. But if you're depressed and you don't know any better, that's the one you go for. And also, but why would a dog's pills have a sleeping... What, do they, what is it they have to stay awake for? Do you know what I mean? If your dog's operating any machinery, you don't understand pets at all. Or you're missing a really fucking good financial opportunity because fuck, your dog can drive a forklift. So I take one of the pills. I'm not really sure what it is, but I take one of the pills. And then I read the, and, I, and, I'll, and it fucking, it's like a sweater for your insides. It's magical. It levels me out. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Something called hydrocodone, right? And, I, and as an alcoholic, I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Just the one time, I'm just gonna do it the one, just the one. Next week, I'll take one other one. Later in the month, then two, maybe five a day. So like an alcoholic drug addict, I escalated and by the, and I was taking seven a day. And at that point, I just had lost it. Fuck, one day, Here's a perfect example. One day I just fucking showed up in the kitchen at my own house with a, I cut myself a mohawk and told my wife I was starting a ska band. If <laughs> that guy's, if you, first off, if your 50 year old husband comes in and says he wants to start a ska band, just take him to rehab, just right away. <laughs> just take him. If anyone wants to start a ska band today, fucking take them to rehab. Bad time, bad time. It's been played out, all right? So I was super fucked up and I did try and start a ska band because, and I quit my other really reliable jobs, comedy and writing books. So <laughs> I'd given up those opportunities. Uh, my wife was very upset. I was a total fucking mess. They took me to rehab. So now I go to rehab, I pull my shit together. I move back in the house. I can't live in the house. They put me in, a, I have a, we have a guest house in a garage. I lived in the garage. There's a place, <laughs> it was on the other side of the yard. I lived in a, in a, in a closet on the other side of the yard, but I, <laughs> Right, you know, hey, good night everybody, anyone? So, uh, uh, but I was living there, but I really was like, okay, I wanna pull it together. I got on the right kind of medication. I figured out that I had some problems and pulling my life together and I'm feeling good. And I kind of missed the Scott band. I really did wanna be a rock star. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I had to give up the, you know what I mean? Not for, I mean, not that anyone noticed, but anyway, so I start working on my stand up and my career. I write a one man show. I make friends with my wife again, just friends. Anyway, I, um, uh, I get my shit together and I'm feeling very good about myself because now I'm not the thing that happens to you, right? I'm the guy experiencing life. I'm not gonna ruin people's lives. I'm gonna be of service. I'm gonna be a good person. I'm just gonna fucking just, you know, just take it day by day, have everything, you know, and things are good. My career's coming back. My wife likes me again. I get asked to go to Australia to perform for 22 nights in, in Melbourne, a uh, one-man show that I've written. Very exciting, career's on the comeback. Got a big tour after that, it's all good. I have a little stomachache, it's fine. It's a little stomachache. I went to the doctor before I left for Australia. He said it was gas. That's not good doctoring when you find out what it was. <laughs> Eight shows into my run in Australia, uh, I'm on fire, my insides are burning, it's awful. I go to the doctor, they give me some drugs, which I, oh my gosh, I remember these. Uh, they, had to, they had to give me some drugs because I was in so much pain, I forgot even about drugs. I forgot that there were, like I was in kill me pain. I was literally like the dog, just end this. Just fucking end it, I was in so much pain. They give me, um, I don't know, whatever, some sort of pain reliever, and then they take a photo of my insides and then they wake me up and they say, you have uh, tumors in your stomach, you have cancer. Fuck, I was not gonna come back. Um, so that's what they said, they have a, you have a, uh, but it was in Australia, so I have to say, and I'm not saying get cancer, I'm against it. I'm against cancer. <laughs> I just wanna come out right now and say I'm against cancer. I don't want you to get it. 
should you think you have it, go to Australia to get the diagnosis because just the way they say cancer sounds a tiny bit less bad. <laughs> That's all, you cancer, it just goes up at the end. It's just cancer mate, you cancer mate. They say mate a lot. It just feels cheerier like you're doing it together. Hey, you cancer mate, we all do, no you do. Anyway, they cancer, they told me that I had it. Uh, they thought I did, they, I had tumors in my stomach. They weren't sure what they were, but they were, there was a cluster of tumors, right? There's really a lot of R's, a lot, there's a lot of R's, you find out there's a lot of R's in cancer. Cluster, tumor, a lot of R's. So I, 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 uh, they think I have cancer and they say, you have to go home. And I was so high on whatever it was they gave me. I'm like, to my apartment in Australia? And they go, no, to America. You have to take your cancer home. And uh, <laughs> you have to take it home, can't have it there. They, they don't want you to die in there. So, um, uh, so I, I, I say, all right. And they, uh, they said, but you're gonna be in pain uh, until you get to the hospital. You need to get there within the next 72 hours. But here is a box of Oxycontin. I'm like, that could be a mistake. A box, not just a few, a fucking box, like with trays. Do you understand? We're talking about a street value of about a million dollars to a drug addict who's already high from whatever it is they gave them. I went out and bought a hat. So here's how high I was. I had my manager with me. I said, take the pills, give them to me, and let's be responsible about this. I just want to get home. I want to see my family. I, if I'm going to die, fair enough, but I just want to get home. So uh, I go uh, to uh, uh, the airport, and everything's fine, except for I accidentally put a knife in my backpack. That's, you don't, you're not allowed to take a knife through customs. I don't know if I'm sharing anything new with you guys, but no knives at customs on an international flight. They don't care for it. Uh, so I had a knife in my backpack, and the lady goes, uh, she was very nice, and she said, sir, this is a knife. And I said to her, I have cancer. She literally goes, uh, I don't know what the next sentence is. Like literally, I don't know what to say to you. So she's like, well, you still have to leave the knife, but I'll give you a hug. So my, my, uh, my manager's with me, so that's my thing. I'm like, just make sure that I don't overuse the drugs because I could. And because I'm dying, I probably don't care. So make me care and don't let me take all that drugs because I don't want to show up at home being that guy. So I get on the airplane, they stick my manager in fucking economy and they put me on first class. So I know I'm dying, right? I know it's a make a wish thing. <laughs> put him in first class, it's probably the last time he'll be on a plane. So they throw him in fucking baggage and I'm sitting in a throne or a, you know, whatever it is, just this massive thing where they just give you back rubs. And I'm sitting next to a guy who I don't know, who turns out to be this drummer for the band Switchfoot. Do you guys know Switchfoot at all? Yeah. Yeah, that's usually the response I get. Yeah. So uh, anyway, they're a fine band. They're a fine band. I don't know them, but I know who they are. But I don't know. I know that I know that they surf, and I know they're Christian, and that's all I know. Probably couldn't sing a song, but the guy's super nice, the drummer. And uh, uh, so we start talking. I say, look, I'm gonna ask you a really weird favor, but I'm dying, maybe, probably, and uh, I have to take these pills. And would you give them to me, and not let me take more than I need, and make sure I take them when I'm supposed to? And he said, yeah, sure. And I said, thank you. Also, if I get up, like if I rub your chest or walk around the plane or. <laughs> I don't know if any of you ever been on OxyContin, but it's not bad. It's, yeah, you feel you're friendly and you like conversations and you want to talk to everyone about everything. And you also, it has this amazing thing that never happens to me in real life. It actually makes you want to listen to people. So, <laughs> like you're genuinely interested in weird shit. What kind of buttons are those on my, on my shirt? Yeah, they seem neat. All right. <laughs> Anyway, the guy was super nice, and I said, would you make sure I don't overuse these? And then I passed out, and I slept the whole flight. Um, you know, uh, and uh, so uh, we get to Los Angeles, and, uh, and uh, so that's cool. I'm sitting next to a guy, you know, a guy from a band. That's neat. And uh, he says, let me walk you to baggage claim. So the drummer from Switchfoot walks me to baggage claim, gets my bags for me, and then he goes, hey, man, I just want to tell you that I love you. I said a prayer for you. You're going to be fine. And I was like, Wow. And I bent down to pick up my bags, and I turned around, and he was fucking gone. <laughs> gone. Not like, oh, in a crowd, like fucking, there was nobody. He was gone! <laughs> I was like, fuck, did I dream that? Were these my last moments? I had a lucid dream? Why the guy from Switchfoot? <laughs> Thank you.